The number new. The, the, the number new. Number new. Well, no, nah, never mind. I'm going to edit that out. That's not even. I'm not even telling the truth now. Hello, friends. I'm Brian, and this is Gizmo Board Games. Today, I'm doing a new take on an old segment, and uh, the old segment is what I played last month, and now I'm going to start doing it kind of as a, a look back. Um, instead of listing the bunches of games I played in order, like I had done, um, and a lot of times it got repetitive. I'm sure you weren't enjoying it 100%, um, and I was tired of talking about the same games over and over again. Uh, I like the games, that's obviously why I'm playing them over and over again, but I don't feel like I need to talk about them month to month, so I'm going to cut out a lot of that fat moving forward, um, and also I want to throw in a little bit of a, a what I what videos I did in the previous month, uh, in case you missed one or two, because uh, sometimes you know YouTube can do that to you. So I'll uh, just kind of a look back uh, as I list the, uh, the X number of games from the previous month I want to talk about. Uh, most of them are going to be new plays, but I might talk about some uh, older ones that I haven't touched in a while or whatever the case may be. Um, but generally, I'll just talk about like my favorite new games that I played in the previous month and a segment where I cover what videos I have put out for you to enjoy. Um, so that's kind of what I want to do moving forward. Uh, less of a straight through what I played and more of a just a, a look back at the month prior. So getting into what happened last month. I put out six new videos. Uh, I try to release a video every Sunday. I've been good for that for almost a straight year now. Uh, plus some other uh, additional videos along the way uh, as they come to me or as I feel like filming them or as whatever the case is, you know, depending on what happens there. So the six videos uh, that hopefully you can find on my channel if you haven't already watched. Uh, the What I played in November, obviously, was the first Sunday of the month. I put out two in my new uh, Favorite Components series, so there's two new video uh, My Favorite Components. Uh, we got Foundations of Rome and Seven Wonders Architects, uh, my favorite components from either of those two games. And then I did like kind of a Christmas uh, leaning list, you know, Stocking Stuffers, Secret Santa, whatever you want to call it, uh, with 10 board games for under or around $20. A uh, little, little countdown there. I did a review, kind of a pandemic overview, and then my take on the the whole pandemic series the the legacy of pandemic as i called it and and where it's at and where it's kind of going and how it's shaped me so that was kind of my review for december and then finally uh, on christmas day i did some golden gizmos uh those were my award show for for the year in games um uh, you know most of them would have been games that i played in fact they all were games i played during the year and moving forward that's kind of my plan if i don't play a game during the year i don't really want to give it a golden gizmo um, and you can check that video out for some of the, the rules and procedures and whatnot. I followed and to look at who the winners were for 2022. That brings us into 2023. Uh, I've already put out one video on the first just because that's how the year happened to fall. And this is now the second Sunday of the month with this video, which is the look back. All right. And looking back at what I played in, in the previous month, December of 2022, I played a lot. I worked just as much as I normally do. I, I don't know. Um, I just got a lot of games to the table uh, in my downtime, more than, more than I have done previously. So I actually played 51 times in December. 51 times I got a game to the table. 32 of them were different games, so that means 19, I think, is the math. Uh, uh, repeats games I played more than once, whatever the case is. 12 of these games, this is a lot, a lot. Like, I think my previous high was like 9 or 10. Uh, 12 were new-to-me games uh, that I got to the table, and, and that's where I want to go with this uh, this month's kind of review or look back or, or whatever we want to call it. I'm going to look at those 12 games, the 12 new-to-me games that I played in December uh, and do a little bit of countdown from my least favorite to the one I enjoyed the most. And then, because I got so many new games to the table, I only had six games that I replayed that I had you know, talked about in the, the prior uh, What I Played video. So a lot of new things or 
were non-repeated uh, games to the table. Again, 51 games I got to the table. 12 of them were new to me. And let's get into how I felt about those 12 new ones. But first, before I do that, I want to talk about two old favorites that I hadn't touched in a while, uh, over a year or two, I think, in, in some of the cases that I got to the table in December. Uh, I was able to table Altiplano, which is one of my favorites, uh, the bag builder game. Got that one to the table with a group. Really enjoy that one. And it was nice to get that to the table again after a year or two. And finally, Five Tribes, another classic uh, that I had on my list of games to play before the end of the year. And uh, I tried to play a game group with it, and that game group fell through. I found a solo play of it. Uh, I think it's the official solo version, solo, uh, solo variant. I found that uh, so I could get to the table because I was at the point where, like, I need to play some of these games I've touched. And I think in the case of Five Tribes, like four or five years since last time I pulled it out. And I'm like, if I'm not playing it, I should move it or or something. And I, I played it, and it reminded me why I want to keep it. And so hopefully uh, here in the future I can get it to the table uh, non-solo and enjoy it amongst friends. Uh, but those were two kind of honorable mentions uh, that I'd played before, but it had been a while. All right, on to the new stuff. What new games I played in December? First of all, my least favorite of the 12, and that's not to say these were bad games, but I'm going to say this is not my kind of game at all in any way, shape, or form. Uh, it's Worder. It's from Button Shy. In fact, the first four are all going to be Button Shy games. And um, not really a knock on Button Shy. I do enjoy their games for the most part. Just these four that I, I played in December aren't amongst games I enjoy all that much in, in the style or the play type or whatever. And I played some really good games too. So, um, but so I would say some of these uh, games that happen to be like nine and ten, they're they're decent games. They're okay. Um, just happens that the, the bottom four, if you will, were all from, from button shy games. And that's because I get one or two of the games every month. So they're, they're going to hit my list a lot anyway. Uh, but the one game, I, it's just not for me at all is Worder. I don't like wordplay games. That's all it is, is you're playing a card on the table and then you've got to make a word with that letter. And then you play another letter to the table and now you got to make a word that has those two letters in order, um, et cetera, et cetera, until you count up how many points you got from how many words, like, how many letters you have either in, in a row or a column um, that you were able to successfully come up with a word with. It's really not my style of game at all. I could care less about putting a, a letter on the table and then saying, oh, it's an R, Rome, cool. Uh, N M on the table, uh, Roman, yay. Now I said R and M in order. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not fun for me. Uh, but it played quick. And if you like um, words and, and you think you'll get something out of, you know, making an 8-9 letter you know word with these letters in the correct order um you know you can check it out it's not for me though order all right my number 11 uh the my 11th least favorite game i played in december of 2022 is again like i said the first four are going to be button shy so hopefully i'll stop repeating that uh this is battle crest uh fellwoods base game and this is a game that kickstarted uh earlier in the year um it's finally uh delivered in december um, I would have got it anyway again, Button Shy, uh, member of the month. Uh, so I didn't have to back it, I don't think, but maybe I did. I don't remember. Whatever the case is, it's a it's a one-player or two-player uh, kind of battle skirmish game where you're, you're moving a, a hero or a hero and a companion around, and you're trying to knock out the other hero and companion. And there's some locations on the map that give you bonuses and stuff. And uh, For me, it's just not my kind of game. I, I could care less about battlers and... I don't even know if I fully understood playing the rules right for movement and, and getting the bonuses depending on where you are and, and using ability. I don't know. It was just more than I wanted to deal with and just not my kind of game again. Uh, going to keep getting more heroes for it as, as the months go on, just being a member. So I don't know. I'll probably collect them for a while and then maybe try to pass a whole collection off to somebody who would enjoy it more than me. Just not my kind of game. It was enjoyable for what it is, just not my kind of game and not something I really care to pull out and keep kind of fussing with. All right, my 10th favorite game from December uh, is Fishing Lessons. It's a solo game where you're kind of remembering your grandfather's uh, fishing lessons, as it's named, uh, to fish. <laughs> uh, it's kind of, uh, I mean, it's easy to explain, hard to explain, I don't know. Uh, but you're playing cards down, uh, certain, I think, but six or seven cards are the lake you're fishing on. Uh, you put a character on the top, and then you're going to do actions, which are going to cause you to move along uh, left to right, and to flip certain ones over. And the object is to see certain 
the right collection of fish um, at the end of each round in order to win. So it's a little bit of a logic deduction puzzle based on action abilities and movements. Uh, so it's interesting. It's fun. I'm going to play it some more here uh, to really fill it out. I only played it, I think, two quick games um, just to kind of get a feel for it and then move on. Uh, Fishing Lessons, a solo game that I I just want to play a little bit more before I get a full-on feel good about it or feel bad about it. But it, it has promise, I think, uh, at least for me. All right, the ninth game I played uh, is The Last Button Shine. This one's not one of the typical uh, wallet games, but it's actually a, a postcard game that has been coming out slowly through the year. I touched it really briefly uh, back in the summer, and I didn't really understand the rules and kind of put it away before half the game was over. I just, it just didn't catch on to me. And as I've you know added more to the collection as it's come out month to month, I, I put it back on the table, read through it again, uh, got a feel for what I was kind of misplaying the last time I played it. Um, it's, it's decent. It's fun. You're rolling dice that are kind of the spirits moving across the land, and you're playing out... Uh, the four or five, six maybe workers around the postcard of, of the village um, and either are going to take actions which are going to give you resources which will help you build walls and things to fight the, the spirit or they're going to play defense during the spirit phase. Um, and so you're kind of balancing the resources uh, and what you need to do to kind of meet goals and, and work on, you know, like I said, the walls and things to fight the spirits and just general defenses to not have the spirits overwhelm you at the end of each night or season or whatever the when the spirits move. Uh, but you can only defend them when they're in the certain color land. And so the, the land postcards have, you know, the lands in different patterns. Um, so maybe the spirits will move through one part and then out and then back in or whatever the case is. So it's an interesting uh, little um, resource management to an extent, uh, kind of tower defense kind of game uh, where, you know, the dice pips are, the, the, the bad guys that you can start, sort of make weaker or kill them off the board as the game goes on. And you're just trying to survive seven nights. And uh, I thought it was more fun definitely the second time through than originally. Um, and this was the first full play, so I'm counting it as a new game that I played in the month because I played it fully and got a real feel for it as opposed to the last time I got it out. And number eight, and this is a game I know is just starting to fulfill and people are finally getting their hands on. Um, there's one gripe about it, uh, that they're, they're working on a fix for the sequel. Um, it's Hamlet and the gripe is the, uh, the, the church, the cheaple, the steeple, uh, components aren't the greatest. Uh, they kind of flimsy and fall apart and, uh, they included like flat ones anyway, in case you don't, don't like the church blocking views and whatnot. They already had included the flat pieces that you can use instead. Um, but the church itself just isn't the sturdiest thing. And, you know, they're working on a fix for the next um, expansion that they're going to release on Kickstarter, I think, this year. Um, and that should come free plus shipping to anybody who, who backed the original game. Um, so good on them for, you know, addressing the, the issue and, and working on a fix. That doesn't seem like something I'm going to have to buy. Personally, I'm not bothered by it. I haven't, like, opened my game since I put it away, so maybe it has fallen apart since then. But... I didn't have too much pr trouble with it. Yeah, it's a little flimsy, a little lopsided, and maybe it's falling apart in the box now. I haven't looked, but I, I don't really care. Like, if, no big deal. It's more uh, aesthetic. It looks nice, but it's not really integral to the game in any way, shape, or form, so whatever. Um, the thing uh, that keeps Hamlet for me at number eight is the fact um, that it, it's... I mean, I like games with a lot going on, I just kept forgetting thing, and I only played the solo, and the solo bot is a little bit rough because they can pretty much do whatever, but it seemed like, and I don't know if this is going to be true with more players or whatever, but I kept trying to build myself up to do stuff, but like my turn is building, and then the solo bot would just use all those resources, so then my next turn would be building up resources again, hoping I could do the actions I want to do the next turn, and you got to remember to, to put the donkeys in the right place, like the donkeys are cool and all, but... Like, I generate resources, and then I realize I can't even use them because I don't have donkeys, and I can't make money because the resource pool is full, and that's the only way to make money is to generate the resource. It, it, I don't know. It's a lot. Maybe I misplayed it. Um, it seems interesting, and I, I want to get to the table with uh, other people, um, but the back and forth with the, the Atoma 
it just seemed more in favor of the Atoma than me because they were able to do things that broke the rules, whereas I had to, to follow the rules. And maybe I misplayed it. I don't know. But it's due another play, but it just wasn't as fun as I had anticipated. Um, so I, that's why it's here in the number eight spot. Nothing against it. It's decent. I want to play it again for sure. I'm not saying I don't want to play any of these games other than maybe Battlecrest and Mortar. Uh, the other ones I'll definitely, like the top ten I've mentioned here in this list, I definitely more than willing to, to continue playing. So <laughs> it's not like I don't like these games. Uh, just Hamlet didn't sit as well or as fun as I had hoped when I backed it. All right, number seven uh, for me is uh, right over my shoulder here, right? Yeah, there we go. Boop, boop, boop. There it is. Uh, Roll Camera, the filmmaking board game, uh, a little cooperative game where you're creating sets and you're trying to make a movie. Uh, you're, you're fulfilling scenes as a group. Uh, it's really tight. It's a lot tighter than I expected. Uh, you know, I was definitely fighting to not lose uh, more than I was fighting to to build a scene. Again, this is one I played solo, but uh, as any co-op, like one to four players, I can be all four players. So it feels the same um, regardless. I think, you know, obviously I didn't have the camaraderie around the board and other heads in the game, but the gameplay itself was, you know, no matter how many different characters I was, it's whether I'm controlling them or somebody else. You know what I'm saying. I hope. Um, but roll camera, it's fun. Uh, I like the theme. Uh, it was just way more challenging than I expected. I didn't even come close to winning. Uh, and that's that's rare for a co-op game that I, I play more than one. I think I played this three times so far. Um, so it's really rare for me to not kind of figure out the game after a play or two and at least be competitive. But I don't think in any of these I even came close to winning. I didn't even get to the end game part where I see if, because you, you want to meet certain thresholds, either your film is really good or really bad. You don't want to be average. And I didn't even get to the point where I was looking at that at the end of a round because I was just out of money and out of, um, what's the other resource? It's, it's funding and, uh, Something else. I don't remember. There's two ways to to end the game, and I was constantly behind the eight ball and keeping those tracks up. Um, enjoyable. Uh, I just I don't want to say I wish it was easier. I don't an easy game. I it just uh, was tougher than I expected, and that's kind of why it fell. I I I never felt like I had a chance to win it, and I need to keep playing. Uh, get better at it. Apparently. So that's a uh, roll camera, the filmmaking board game, my number seven. Number six is one of the Stefan Feld city games. You might be able to kind of hint at it. Well, I think that's Marrakesh there on the corner of the screen, but it's right there next to me here. Uh, it's New York City. I enjoyed it enough, not as much as a couple other ones I mentioned. Uh, maybe later in the list. I didn't mention them last month because they're coming up later. So. Spoiler alert, I guess. Uh, New York City was okay. It's a re-implementation of an, an older game. I don't remember offhand which one it's re-implementing, but I hadn't played it as that either. Um, but you're going around, you're kind of area controlling um, the different six boroughs or five boroughs in New Jersey in this game um, it, it, with numbers of skyscrapers, and you're kind of manipulating where the points are uh, if you do certain actions, and you're building with actions. It's a card drafting to get better abilities in each of the actions. And I really enjoyed it. It was a, a tight kind of manipulation. I always liked the, the cards as actions and the drafting of your actions. Um, I only played this against solo. I think that's going to be the case for a lot of these, unfortunately. Um, but I could see this being just the same amount of fun in a group uh, because when I'm drafting, I'm drafting based on what I'm given uh, my opponent. And in a, in a multiplayer game, I can kind of see what they might be going for and, and block them or not block them, depending on whether I care about what they're doing versus what I'm doing. Um, it was fun. It's fun to uh, draft and manipulate the actions and to work towards that uh, the points on the board uh, from you know the, the area control and the uh, you're getting uh, elevator employees that can give you bonus points for various things too or bonus actions. And I don't know. It's my kind of game. Um, just not as much as the, the bottom, the top five that are coming up, uh, New York city, uh, one of the stuff on Feld city games. I enjoyed it. I look forward to playing it in a group as is the case with a lot of these games. When you play a lot of your games solo, 
Um, but that's New York City. I think I've said that like seven times now. My number six favorite game that was new to me in December of 2022. Uh, number five new to me game in December 2022 is Progress, the Evolution of Technology. Um, I think it's directly behind me. I, I don't think you care where it is in my collection anyway. It's a it's a, uh, a technology tree. Uh, you're drafting cards in your hand and you're building an engine. Um, I, I can think of other games, but they're off. The, they're kind of like Seven Wonders. You, as you build the little buildings, you get more and more capability to build bigger and bigger buildings. You're progressing through three different ages or four with the expansion. And you're trying to generate technology in one of three uh, plus a wild different categories of technology as you advance in your building up the ability you know if you play out like um writing then you can play poetry i'm not sure if these are exact but you know it's a tech tree game where you're building off so you can either pay the points to play things out or if you have the prerequisites you get it for free type action and you're building up your tableau of cards as the ages go on and then at the end of the game you're just trying to have the most points uh, I really enjoy kind of engine builders. It's got an engine builder feel. It's a tech tree game. Um, so you want to plan things out in the right order. You want to make sure you have the resources you need for later cards uh, that you're holding on to, uh, et cetera. Uh, it's just kind of my style of game. It's really enjoyable. And I I, I just I liked playing it. And I, that's why it's my number five. The number four new to me game in December of 2022 is going to be Flamecraft. Uh, it's a game I've had for a little while, and I, why do why do you don't care? Flamecraft. <laughs> it uh, got delivered to me when I kickstarted it early in the year. I sat on my shelf for a couple months before I got it to the table, and I got it to the table a few times in December uh, of a couple different groups. Uh, it's a nice, simple. Uh, Family Plus game, a Gateway Plus, I guess. Um, it's real cute, working on putting your dragons around the city, and they're helping the artisans uh, at the various shops. Um, in the end, you're just using them to generate resources to fill orders to get points and drive in game as you're getting more dragons and more, um, they're called enchantments, out on the shops, but as you're playing them out, they're making the shops better and better, and the shops have different actions that you've got to think through. It's it's not a tough game. Um, the themes, it's cute, it's, so it's easy to to introduce and get people excited for. Not a lot of depth to it, but there's enough there to at least make it fun to play a, a few times. Um, and there's enough variety that it doesn't feel super samey, although I could see it kind of getting to that point eventually because in the end you're only using six dragons and they all act the same depending on what color they are and there's only so many shops you're going to pull out before you know eventually I, it's going to definitely feel the same but it's you know it's a lightweight family uh, introductory plus type game where you it got a good theme it, it looks really good it's easy to introduce to get people into looking for you know um, resource management and um, order fulfillment. Uh, it's not tough to to table at all. I enjoyed playing it. I played it solo. Uh, I didn't do very well on the solo mode. You have to meet a certain threshold to kind of unlock. Um, I get kind of can't. It's not really campaigny, but they lock away certain cards, and when you meet certain objectives, you can unlock those cards. But in order to even meet objectives, you have to get a certain point score. And I didn't play well enough to get that point score uh, on my solo play. And in my multiplays, I think I played this a couple times in groups. Um, we we all we all had a good time. Uh, like one one of my guys say it was more to it than he expected, and that's kind of the way I felt about it too. But I also know when they originally making the game, I think they had planned on it to be even more in depth than it was, and you know a lot of the playtesters kind of kicked back that it was almost too involved, so they kind of simplified it. If if I recall correctly, reading that. But anyway, that was my number four new to me game in December, Flamecraft. All right, my number three new to me game from December of 2022 is Marrakesh. Uh, Marrakesh, another one of the Steffenfeld City Collection games. Uh, it's the one you can see right there, I think. I don't, why do I keep doing that? I keep asking that and I, and I keep doing it. All right, I'm going to try to stop. I'm not going to stop. I guarantee it. Anyway, Marrakesh, uh, you're, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a game with a lot going on. Uh, you're picking your um, Keshis, a little, you got 12 different colors of, um, 
hexacubes. Uh, you're going to pick three of them uh, for three rounds four different times. So you're going to go through them all. They're going to dictate dictate the actions you're going to take on your board. Um, they're also going to make each of those actions more powerful, but you're going to collect them all from all the players and drop them in the tower. And then whatever comes out, you're going to take turns drafting up to two of any given color. So the ones you put in might not even be the ones you're getting out, depending on how everybody around the table um, drafts them. So you might have plans, and then your plans are going to be kind of thwarted, maybe, uh, depending on what your plans were for the, the Keshi you put in. Maybe you didn't even care about the one you dropped in. But you got to do the actions related to the colors. Um, so you're going to do every action once per round, at least plus the one wild choice you get. Um, but you're going to draft the different Keshis out and make different abilities um, better or give you more resources. It's a lot of back and forth, a lot to, to manage, but there's not a whole lot going on once you get used to kind of what's happening in the iconography and um, what the actions do. Um, but it's, it's nice and involved, and it has a lot of different things going on without being overly complex. I really enjoyed it. I want to play it again. Um, this is one I can't play solo because of the nature of the drafting and everything. Maybe maybe there's a good solo version out there. At some point, I'll check it out. But for now, uh, I'm happy to kind of wait till people want to play it again because everybody at the table, I think, had a pretty good time with Marrakesh, uh, my number three game from December. That was new to me. Bringing up the top two. So the my second favorite new to me game uh, from December 2022 is going to be Lost Ruins of Arnak, and I swear to God, I'm not going to point over my shoulder. Uh, Lost Ruins of Arnak is a game that I had a lot of praise throughout the year, or maybe even last year. I don't remember exactly when it was on a lot of people's lists when it came out. Um, but Lost Ruins of Arnak, a lot of fun Indiana Jones type adventure um, where you've only got two workers, <clears throat> so it's tight worker placement, um, and then you're just driving actions from the resources you have and the cards you have. Um, so you, you're not necessarily doing two actions. If you're playing the game well, you're going to get a multitude of actions despite only having two workers because you can do other actions on the board and based on the cards you have and getting more cards out. And it's kind of a, a resource track race, worker placement, um, deck builder. A uh, lot of different things going on. They're all fun. I really enjoy it. And you kind of feel like you're an explorer uh, exploring Arnak, a little Indiana Jones uh, yourself, and uh, with the leaders expansion, everybody's got uh, different capabilities to to try out, depending on which. Um, yeah, they're called leaders. I'm pretty sure uh, which leader you are for for the game too. So uh, with the expansion, which I do have, um, but yeah, Lost Ruins Arnak is really enjoyable. Uh, it deserved all the talk it got in the past, and I'm glad to have finally gotten it to my table. Bringing up my number one favorite new to me game from December 2022. And if you watched my favorite new to me games from the video I did last week uh, that talks about my whole year of new to me games, this is uh, was very, very high on the list. I don't want to spoil it uh, too much, but very high on the list uh, there. And it obviously is going to be my favorite game from last month. Uh, it's Hamburg, the third of the four uh, Stefan Feld City games that I played in December, and it's my favorite. Uh, again, it's, uh, you got five cards in your hand. There are five different colors of card, and you're going to choose what color card you want without knowing what's on the other side. And the other sides have various abilities. Uh, if you build them as a building, or they could be a zoo, or you could just use them as a plot to build a different building on, um, because those cards are going to be everything you're doing in that game. Uh, you got different actions you can take with those cards, and the color is going to dictate, uh, for the most part, the, the color is going to matter uh, because they're going to get you the gold based on the die roll, or they're going to get you the meeples that are going to be the same color. Uh, so it's a lot of lot, a lot of variety, a lot of options, a lot of choice, um, really, really tight um, hand management, and those are some of my favorite styles of game. Uh, it was really enjoyable. It uh, used to be called Bruges, I believe, Uh back before, you know, the Queen remake uh, of Hamburg now. Uh, I really, really, really like Hamburg, and uh, I played it solo and in a group and and have enjoyed it in every way, shape, or form. That's why it was really high on my overall New to Me games from last year, and it was obviously my favorite game from last month. All right, there you have it. That's kind of my look back. This video still went on longer than I thought it would, 
But that's fine. I talked about it a lot, and hopefully you were engaged and involved and uh, didn't leave after the first minute. Uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe below if you haven't already, and comment on what your favorite games from December were, and maybe which video of mine that I put out last month was your favorite to watch. I really appreciate you being here and commenting and following along, and we will catch you next time. Bye.